In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a cabochon setting onto a wire woven framework. It's a very simple setting and it allows you to really appreciate the whole of the gemstone um, in a very simple way. Here I've used the setting onto a necklace style piece or a choker collar style piece. But for the demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set it into a bangle. Now, you can adapt the, this technique um, as much as you like using larger or smaller cabochons, more or less um, layers of wire, uh, and more or less cabochon settings. It's really simple to adapt. So I'm going to show you how to do that and what materials you will need. So in terms of materials, you're going to need a cabochon. Here I've got a lovely small um, tiger's eye cabochon. It's a roughly 25 by 15 millimeter cabochon. I've got some three millimeter round tiger's eye beads. And then I'll have a selection of wire. So I've got a 0.8 millimeter wire for the framework and for the actual structure of the piece. And then a 0.4 millimeter wire to bind it all together and help secure those cabochons and do your weaves. And then tools, very simple tool um, set of tools we'll need here. So just your basics. Your flesh cutter pliers, your snipe nose pliers, or flat nose pliers, some people will call these, and your round nose pliers. So really, really basic toolkit, um, and then something obviously just to work on top of. First thing we need to do is to cut our lengths of 0.8 wire. Now here I've got five lengths of 0.8 wire, and I've gone for about eight inches, so that's going to allow me to make a full cuff style bangle and allow a little bit of room to manipulate the outer wires to make the setting and then have some left at the end to do a decorative finish. So I've cut five lengths, eight inches each, and we're going to start with a weave to start binding them together before we do the manipulating to set the gemstone. So I'm going to work straight from my reel of wire because um, this is one where you, you can do that and so you may as well. So first things first, I'm going to take one of my wires and I'm going to just leave, leave a bit of a tail here just in case you need to extend the weave this way slightly when you finish. And I'm going to just wrap the wire all the way around that one piece of wire, that one 0.8 mil wire. Then I'm going to take my second wire, you see I'm popping it underneath the 0.4 wires come over the top here. I'm going to pop the other wire, the next 0.8 wire, parallel with the first. The wires come in over the both and then I'm going to come just around just that one 0.8 wire. So around, you see I'm pushing it in with my finger and just give it a little rock to cinch that in nice and tight together. And then I'm going to add the third. So again, in exactly the same way, popping the third wire in underneath that 0.4 wire. And again, wrap that around and cinch it in nice and tight. And then I'm going to add in the fourth wire. So there's a fourth going in, same again. The wire's going over the top and around and pulling it nice and tight. And then the fifth and final wire going over the top, around and cinching it in nice and tight. Now, this weave is repeated exactly the same. What you will find is on the way down, so this is where we've just, that weave we've just done, you get your little wires looking like they're going across just one wire at a time. When we come back up the other way, it appears that they cross two. But if we flip this over and look at the back, on the back it also looks like they're crossing two. So to avoid confusion, what I tend to do, or I tell people to do when they're doing this design, is just to flip it over each time. So once you get to the end of a row, flip your work over, and then you feel like you're doing exactly the same movement. So you're going over the wire and all the way around each wire once, all the way around and then to the next wire, just lay them out slightly 
And if you want to splay them out, feel free to do that. But just remember that you've splayed them. So it means that every time you do this, you're going to have to cinch a little, little, um, little more to get them to cinch back in rather than stay splayed out. Another tip, <clears throat> if you don't want to splay them, is just to kink the ends out. So just literally a little kink on each end, which will help you, help the wires guide, guide in. So if I just kink those ends out, you can see it's going to be much easier for me to get my wires in between, but without widening this off too much at the bottom where we're weaving. So we're just going around each wire one at a time, wrapping around it and then moving on to the next wire and wrapping around it. Okay, so I'll do that one more time. I'm going to flip the design over, which means then the action is exactly the same each time because it can get confusing when you're starting out. Once you've done this a few times, it will become second nature. And this is probably the most useful weave um, because when it builds up nice and quickly, two, it's very, very secure and binds your wires really securely together. Three, it looks really nice. And four, if you get bored weaving, you can open it out and make a zigzag pattern rather than a really tight, close together, um, almost looks like knitting. And when you've when you've done it really tightly together but if you wanted to you can splay it out and get a zigzag and actually reduce the amount of time you have to spend on it as well so i'm going to carry on weaving with this and what i want to do is weave around um three inches along this this length of wire so um once i get so far i'm going to slide it down towards the end and then we'll do the cavishan setting but i'll come back to you at that point when we're ready Okay, so I have woven for half of the length of my bracelet, We're just under half actually, because we want to, the cabochon here is gonna take up about an inch in space and the, the ends here are gonna be about a quarter of an inch or so, will take up that much space. So probably you want to be aiming for around a third of the bracelet to be, um, well, around, a, two thirds of the bracelet to be this weave. So one for each side of, of the cabochon. Okay, so I've, I've gone for about two and a half inches here. That should give me about a six and a half inch bracelet. Um, so at this stage, what I've done is I've slid the weave down um, to the end and I've left some tails at the end here to be decorative with. And just to prevent it from sliding even further off, if you just kink all these wires just out to the sides, just to stop that weave from being able to slip down. The rest of the wires we want to straighten out and we're going to leave three core wires and the two outside wires we're going to pull out to the side like this, okay? Now because the weave goes in a zigzag you'll find that one of the bends wants to be a little bit higher than the other. So what you need to do here is just help it out a little bit by coming in and just raising that that bend slightly. So just use your pliers just to help it be in the same position as the as the other one, as the one on this side. Okay, so that they're level. And then we're going to create a, a sort of a semicircle um, shape or a semi-oval shape then because the cabochons are oval. So I'm going to use my finger to do this. If you want to use um, a tool, then you can, of course. But I'm going to use my finger because I'm just going to try and mimic the shape of that cabochon or the sort of um, profile of that cabochon then so that this is going to sit on top of it eventually or just off to the side. So I'm gonna go with that just for a minute and I might adapt it in, in just a moment when I bring the cabochon up to um, just double check. And I'm gonna mimic that on the other side. So if you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just putting my thumb in the way, just holding onto the wire with my thumb as I sort of tease that wire round into this oval semicircle shape. Now what we want to do, and this is um, and this is why this is so adaptable for other cabochons and other, other sizes, is we're then going to take our cabochon and just pop it into that space. This is a bit fiddly because it obviously wants to slide around and just lift, lift that semicircle up and just see if it will hug so first thing we're going to check is it's the right length. So it wants to be the end of that semicircle and wants to be at the tip 
of the cabochon, so around here. So we know we've got the right sort of size, but then we want to look at the depth of it. So I think it's a little bit, little bit big because if we put that onto the top, our cabochon could just slide through. So I'm just going to make those a little bit smaller. And then if we position it again and just have a look, just to see once that is secured in, will that sit up on the sides but not come over the top? Okay, so another way to check that is to pop the cabochon into the side and just see if that rise is deeper than the actual cabochon itself. So because it is, we can just, just alter it slightly. So play with that a little bit until you get the right size. And of course, depending on what cabochon you're using, we'll sort of alter that as well. Once you've decided that you're happy with it, then take your pliers, your flat nose pliers, go to the point where the wire intersects those sort of three core wires and then use your thumb against the pliers just to push the wire back up and straight so that it's parallel again with the other core wires. And we'll do the same on the other side. So pliers in just where that wire sort of starts to intersect. Hold on nice and tight with your pliers and then push with your thumb against the pliers or finger against the pliers to get that coming up nice and straight. Okay, so we've got this circle now sort of shape along our woven wires. So I'm going to, I'm going to trim this wire off here and I'm going to start again with the weave this side. I'm trimming this because I want to help use this to help me create the, the setting for the gemstone. So I'm going to leave myself around 30 centimeters just there and that's going to help me with the setting in just a moment. I'm now going to add in some wire on this side of that um, setting that we've made here. Again 0.4 wire and again leave a nice long tail so about 20 centimeters so that we can use this tail to attach uh, cinch our sort of um, sides of the cabochon setting up together and um, have some have some to work with. So 20 centimeters tail and we're going to start in exactly the same way as we did before and um, just imagining that this is the end of the of the wires. So again splay them out so that you can easily see which wires you're going in between. Lay that 0.4 wire across the top or the first of the 0.8 wires and pull it all the way around. Then we go to the next one in line, put the wire all the way around it and bring it in and pull nice and tight to get those wires to sit close to one another. We'll do the next one along, turning that wire round, pulling nice and tight and then the next wire along around and pull nice and tight then the next wire along around and pull nice and tight okay once you're happy that they're nice and secure and all parallel parallel then you can again flip the work over so that you're doing the same action each time just makes it a bit simpler to remember and then go around weaving along. Now you're going to continue this weave until you've got the same amount um, as on the other side. Now this is really easy to do, you don't even need to take measure for this because all you need to do is count the amounts of points. So because we've got that lovely zigzag pattern, you can say, right, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 points. So you need, you know you need to create 13 points this side. I'm going to carry on creating mine and I'll come back to you once they're done. I've now completed the weave on both sides of my bracelet. I've splayed out and trimmed the ends um, so that they can't, the weave can't slide off. And now it's time to think about setting that cabochon in the centre there. So because of the weave and the tails that we had left behind, we've got these two tails of wires um, either side. But what we also want is another set. So we need two tails like this on each side to help us with the setting. So I'm going to take an additional length of my 0.4 wire and I'm just going to pop that up and I'm going to try and pop it in between the weave 
on this side um, slotting it in there just so if I got it in between the weave I know it's a bit more secure so I'm going to pull that wire up there to match the other side and then just bring the 0.4 wire diagonally across the back across the back of the wires there and up through in the same position on the other side that will give us two wires on each side to work with so just pop in that piece in there. so this piece of wire is about 25 centimeters so we've got a roughly 15 to 20 centimeters on each side so just make sure oh, that one's pulled out that's just i didn't get that in between the weave by the looks of it so no problem just come back in and make sure we're going in between the weave so that it can't it's nice and securely placed in there there's plenty of places to go in and if you can't you can make a space just by spreading the weave out slightly with your fingernail or with your tools to get that wire through okay and now it's important that both wires are in the same position um, on each side so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these wires and we're going to come outside of the frame so around the frame coming over it and through and you're going to wrap around the frame three times uh, four times sorry on each side so three and four so that's four times around and now i need the wire on the inside of the loop so it feels like wrapping five times okay so we're going to do that on each side I'm going to do that and then come back to you. Now I've wrapped five times on each of the four sort of points on that setting um, and the wires are coming out so probably about five millimetres, four or five millimetres from the very edge of that semicircle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is set the gemstone into that circle, into that housing and we're going to pull those um those sort of wires up and over the gemstone so i'm going to do that whilst it's down here now this bit's a bit fiddly because obviously the gemstone wants to wants to move around a bit and if you want to you could just apply a little bit of glue underneath um and let that dry and then continue the setting and that way um you're not relying solely on glue but it would just help you keep it in place while you work so at this stage, try and keep it in place and then pull these wires up like this. So pull them upwards and they just sit and lip on the edge of that gemstone to stop it sort of being able to fall through either side. And then to keep those together, we're going to use these wires and sort of lace them backwards and forwards across the edge of each of the settings. So it's important to try and keep your gemstone in because if we do one side and pull it nice and tight, what it's gonna do is just push the gemstone this way. So we're gonna try and do both sides to get us started at the same time while holding the gem in. So a bit of patience required. So what we're gonna do is cross the two 0.4 wires over the end of that gemstone. We're gonna try not to let them slip underneath the gem, try and let them sit on top, and then take the wire over and up and through that framework. So cinching it into place. So one wrap for now, do the same on the other side. You might want to move the framework around rather than trying to cross over. So up and through that framework on this side. Pull nice and tight because we're cinching that frame in together to stop it from opening and allowing the gemstone to come out. So as that one's gone in a bit tighter, I can then tighten this one up as well. You see I'm rocking it backwards and forwards a bit like a ratchet strap. So hold again, hold the gemstone in position on the other side and you're gonna come over, cross the wires over at the bottom at the tip of that gemstone and then thread up through the frame and pull in nice and tight. Same on the other side. So over the frame and up through it. And remember the gemstone isn't gonna be secure just yet. It's gonna take a few more moves like this to keep it in place. So it's still a bit vulnerable. So 
So again, hold on to the gemstone so that weave doesn't, so that wires don't slip underneath it. Pull and cinch in place. Okay, you may need to rock those wires back and forwards a couple of times to really get them to cinch in. So hold the wires close together and cinch and pull. So that rocking action will help pull everything in nice and tight. You might find you need to go do one side and then back to the other side and do that one again as well. Okay, so once you've got the one, one in, you can then repeat that process. So you're going to bring the wire back underneath the frame on each side. And then again, cross the wires over and then under the frame on the opposite side. So it's like tying laces really, it's just instead of having a, an eyelet, you're going around the frame. So cinch that in nice and tight, same on the other side. And we'll keep doing this backwards and forwards until that gem is much more secure and not at risk of falling out. There are a few other things we can do if you find this is a bit loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue with this on the other side and then come back to you and give you some tips on making sure that gemstone stays nice and safe. As you can see now, the gemstone is nice and secure in there. It's, it's fairly secure. I think there's a bit of room for helping it out a little bit. And there's a few things that we're going to do. So particularly in a bracelet design, you're going to sort of bend and manipulate this um, wire, or this framework. And so the process of doing that actually um, sort of tightens and cinches that gemstone in a bit more anyway. So that will help. And the other thing you can do is you can use these tail wires to come across the back of the gemstone, cross it over the back just like this. And that will also, just like that, and that will also help with a bit of stability. Now I'm gonna add a um, tiger's eye um, bead either side of this cabochon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross these wires across the back anyway and take them in. So that's going to give me that bit of extra support. And then what I'm going to do is turn them around and I'm going to post the wire up through the weave. So one from one on one side, so between sort of the outer two wires and the other one through the other side between those outer two wires. You might need to, again, you might need to just make a bit of space in that weave to get it up through. So I've got these through on this side. So do repeat the same on the other side. And then once you've got the two wires through, we're then going to take those either direction through one of our tiger's eye beads. So just pop the bead onto one side and then take the opposite wire onto it. And we're going to cross that through and pull nice and tight so that bead then sits just at sort of the tip of that cabochon. So we want to manipulate and pull it so that it sits in there. That's just gonna sit there, just a bit of extra decoration. And then we can finish these wires then by just wrapping a couple of times around the outside frame, the outside wire in between that weave. That will stay nice and neat and tucked away, hidden because that weave sort of will hide those extra wraps that we need to put in. Okay, so two or three times around just to keep it secure. And then once you're happy, you can trim that very little edge of wire off. I'm trimming at the back, but what I'm going to do is pinch it in with my flat nose pliers so that it just sits sort of in between the weave. So left it just a little bit longer than I would and then pinch it and sort of turn your pliers so that it teases the wire to sit into in between the wires of the weave there. We'll do the same on this side. So wrap those around and that sort of gives you one, a bit of stability at the back where the wires are crossing over, but also allows you to add a bit of detail and finish these wires, these weaving wires off nice and neatly. Then you'll just shape your bracelet and then at the end you can do um, you can finish these however you like. So I like to use spirals. So I just spiral each one in turn, trimming them down as I go to make sure um, that they all sit neatly. 
but you can just fold these over and make loops so you can put a clasp if you prefer a clasped um, bangle than a just a torque style but I'll leave the finishing of that to you and I hope you've enjoyed that way of setting I'd love to see how you use it in your projects